Get with it. Get the program. Edit all this out. Edit, 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 edit. Start it right up. Oh, edit that out too. Mother chicken. Welcome back to the joy of welding, everyone. I'm here with my good friend, Dr. Dennis Bob, and I call him that because we're repairing some excavator teeth here today. That's right. We're gonna use a variety of different electrodes and abrasives to really get down into these teeth and bring them back to life. Let's get into it. Oh, gee whiz, Bob, that's a lot of damage. This guy really needs your help. A lot of damage indeed. We are gonna start with our base cleaning, and then we're gonna stack some 7018 rod. This is a Lincoln 7018 rod. We're gonna lay it down Mm. We're just gonna build that right on up. We're gonna lay it down first, yep. Down. Before we stack our hard facing rod, we're gonna need a buttering layer. That sounds delicious. We're making a tooth sandwich here. So we got our 7018 built up, and we're gonna lay down a, a stainless 309 rod. Uh, Gee whiz, why on earth would you wanna put that on to butter it up? It's gonna create uh, a hardening layer between our softer metal, and it's gonna prevent our hard facing rod from ripping and spalling off our our base metal. What's this so old guy got, here? This is a post alloy 210 tubular rod. So, oh, uh, it's tubular. Really the most tubular that's rod. That's radical. Right and that's gonna create us a nice solid hard facing top layer. And then also this is an ESOB Studi 35. It's gonna do the same concept. We're gonna run these Studies on the top here to create a hard facing top bed for material catch and prevent wearing. Fantastic, that's wonderful. Let's dive into it. Mm -hmm. Time to celebrate. Today's machine of choice is the Lincoln Aspect 375. What an absolutely boss of a machine. It is a TIG welding unit by heart, but this old girl can still stick well. Now, when we come to set up our machine, we can of course adjust our amperature and we'll change that depending on the electrode we're using today. How we change our polarity, which we might have to switch back and forth. The stinger always goes here and your groundwork always goes here. Our process is how we move back and forth. You see how this little guy here has a little bit deeper penetration, that's gonna be a DC positive. So you don't have to flip the leads, you just change your process. And when this little shallow guy here with the stick electrode tells us, we're gonna weld DC positive. Let's brush this too. Well, how do you do, how did those 3M fiber discs do for you? Amazing. Never used a piece of material so fine for real though. Like I it's nice and clean, no cavities there. Let's go ahead and throw that 7018 pass for the buildup to get this thing right back to something, huh? Yep, absolutely. We're gonna start with the most aggressive part. Put a little mark here and a little mark here. Just maybe we'll see it inside of our hoods. And we're gonna hit these passes first to the end. Run that and that, and then we'll chip that off and then we'll run a full pass right over the top of that. We should be pretty close back to life. You're gonna need some good vision to see those edges, aren't you? That's correct. That 4C technology is some quality stuff. Absolutely. How many beans you want? I want all the beans. All the frijoles. Somewhere in the 130 amps. It was at 120 and I preset that for you. I like that. Put those safety shades on, hey? Absolutely. Fantastic. That's on grind mode. That's, we're a little hot too. What you want? 114. Still a little hot. Yeah, we're all right. It could come down a little bit though. Bumping you down four. All right, we just got that first pass on to fill up some of this. So now we're gonna shape it up a little bit and then we're gonna run one more cap pass of our 7018. All right, we just dropped in rod size a little bit so we can do some fill in some of these spots to get everything evened out. And then we're gonna hit it with our 3M and and move on, get ready to start putting our buttering layer on. Now you gave it a go, slag drag. All right, so we're done with the 7018. We're gonna knock it all down with this 3M fiber disc, and then we're gonna stack it up. We're gonna put our buttering layer on with the 309.
You flat top to good with that fiber disc. What'd you think of that? That thing is the jam. Man, it hogs sure. it, doesn't it? I really like that. Just oh. eats it. So now we got to put that 309 layer on. Why do we put the 309 and not just go straight to the hard facing? Well, rod? so look, we just stacked up our 7018, right? So there's our 7018 down there. Our uh, angle's a little off still. That material is stacked up hard. However, it's not as strong as our stainless. So our stainless is a good barrier between our parent material and then our hard facing. So we don't rip apart Correct. the buildup. Because that we if just we put just on. go full buildup 7018, if we stack that just like that, it would break off most likely and we'd have a spalling issue with our material. Let's go ahead and put that 309 so we're on stack there. Stack 309 right now and then we're going to follow up with some hard facing rod. How many layers you need, Bob? Just one? Just that one. Well, we got our, our stainless stacked, and now we're gonna lay a nice layer of this tubular post-alloy hard-facing rod. All right then, it's a long rod. It might be long rod, this one. I have to give it the long rod. Burned right through, right there. Yeah, it did. Here you go, bud. <laughs> Thanks. I would like to run a second pass over this. Also, I, I hit a little snag right here and it kind of burned through, so it ate away some of my uh, my base material. Now, why the tubular? What's the whole thing with that? I mean, I don't know everything about it. But I bet I there's a lot know, of good stuff uh, in there. Yeah, it's full of good stuff. The slag deposit is extremely minimal. Tubular so. electrode with extra high chromium content provides superior abrasion resistance and mild to moderate impact resistance. Deposit take on high polish used on carbon and alloy steels, stainless steels, and manganese steels. That's what I just said. And it doesn't leave a whole lot of slag, I gather. Yeah, really, it's very minimal. You right see that there's just like a couple little yep. little bits of these little deposits, kind of like a silly little MIG. Let's put another layer. While the sparks are flying, I'm still hitting the carbon, so we're still on the top of our parent material. But as soon as I get up over on top of this edge here, or even on the slightest edge of these two, our sparks start to leave because our rods, our hard-facing rods, have a lot less carbon in them, or little to no carbon. Nice and clean. Now we decided this old dog looked like a mermaid tail, so we're going to put some scales on it. You've got the hardened edge on one side, but we want to put some abrasion resistance on this too. So let's put some happy little scales. We don't want to get too tight with the radiuses as we do have to stick weld these. And if we make too small of scales, they won't look like scales at all. They'll just look like big old boogers. Now we're gonna alternate. We want those scales to kind of be overlapping. So we don't wanna make them all in the same place. It's okay if they're not perfect and straight in one spot. See, now we're just kinda going with the flow. No worries, we'll just pull these lines down. I think we're getting a nice little tail, don't you think? I agree, that's a, it's a beautiful tail. We got our lines on there now. Let's put this studi on. Let's do it. Now we're putting this pattern on there. And what are some patterns that you can do for hard facing? So we do a lot of different patterns. Typically uh, in the field, you would find us doing a checkerboard pattern, which is very similar to this. It depends on the size of our checkerboard, but not only will this hard facing material stack up and save the parent material, but it'll also hold the crushed material that they're using, the dirt or the stones or whatever. It'll grab all that small thing and it'll keep it in that pocket and then it'll ultimately save the rest of your material too. I See, felt like I was spreading pudding around. I didn't really like the way that yeah, welded. Yeah. What is that happy little accident? Let's get a better look. Yeah, let's check it out. 
Good God almighty, what did I do? What probably happened was we probably have some, maybe some dirt inside of there in our material or, or maybe just. It looks like some really intense casting, some sort of hardened material. Yeah. I don't know, it like my rod angle was just a little funky right in here and it pushed that metal off and instead it like rolled and pulled yeah, a little bit of the yeah, steel also, away. Yeah. Over here is fine, yeah. but my gosh. I don't have any with me, but we should have probably used a little bit of a smaller rod and that would have probably helped from melting into all this and, and helping that, uh, that pulled material that you're talking about. What maybe I should nice do is material. change my rod angle change too. Change your rod angle Because I was sure. pushing down. I would agree with mm -hmm. that rod angle. Let me get on this whole side of it. Let me get out of your way. When it comes to that uphill spot, and right there where I start to pile up a lot of metal, it wants to roll. We are also at a little angle too. We should probably wedge something underneath it and give us a little more of a flatter surface. Ooh, see there it goes to running. Yeah, we do have a little issue, a uh, running issue. I think it might be our temperature too. We're actually at the low end for these Studi 35s at 175 amps. But it seems to be working a little bit better with this my angle changed so far, but I would agree with you. If we can get it in a flat position, I think we'll have more success. Gravity's wanting to pull that material right off of there. At least we can get all the way across. We got a lot of whoop de doos in there. Yeah, you put a lot in there. Oh wow, we still got some of those problems down there at the end. Let's try to get a little plate underneath it so that we can get it flat, huh? Don't forget to jimmy. What kind of junk did you bring in here to weld on today? You know, you're in the field and you never know what you're gonna get to work with. I also didn't find out exactly what this parent material is made of, and that could be a part of our issue as well. So I made some assumptions and I think I made the wrong ones. Uh, it's got a different one because it's blocking all the it's blocking everything. action. Part of what we're doing inside of here, this will build up with material and that'll help save our parent material as we move along. Let's go this way. Oh yeah, I feel like this flat already feels better. This rod is like a one position rod, man. I guess that little angle definitely was uh, giving us some issues too. Yeah, that's good to know. In case you're using a Studi 35 at home, that little incline really just rips away the steel. Another pattern we use in the field too, I, I mentioned checkerboard, but we also just do like a stringer pattern with a small space in between, almost like a bead's width in between each pass and, and just the lines. And that helps also hold material and, and protect our parent. Let's give her a peek now, huh? Oh, there you go. That's much yeah. nicer. I think Ariel would, be, Ariel would be proud. You got it. Let's keep going. Let's add some more in there. You're gonna what? You're gonna Wire brush it, hit it with the wire wheel. Hit You're gonna what? The wire wheel. Wire. A wire. A what? A wheel of wire. You're gonna do a what? Jimmy Don't. it. I'm gonna jimmy it. Ah! Hit it with the jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to go for really tall, tall fellas here. Those will help pick up any other pesky pebbles that decide they wanna fall out. You definitely have to mind your travel speed on here. You can't get in a hurry. Yeah, it'll definitely let you know. What does it normally tell you? It tells me I need to go back and do it again. Slow down. That's the best advice that I could give any student in welding school is do it again. Do it again, man. I sure have gotten off pattern, haven't I? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Just happy little welds. They're gonna scoop uh, concrete, busted rock, and all kinds of things, so. As long as it can uh, hold a good aggregate inside of there, I think it's doing its job overall. Saving the tooth is the most important thing. So even if it didn't hold extra material, that hard facing rod that we're stacking up there is gonna do an excellent job keeping the rest of this tooth alive. Oh yeah, that's what we like to see. That's it. That's Just that like good old. Yep. Just, Just get it on there. So you could do all of that or you could just give it a jimmy. Give it a jimmy. Well, that sure was some nasty stuff that we welded on today, wasn't it, Bob? Absolutely. 
after looking at my hood all day, I'm really disappointed in myself. I mean, look how nasty this thing was. Sticking right over the, the fumes. We should have been treating ourselves better as welders. That's how we'll live longer. I agree. Should have been using some overhead ventilation like this X-Fume or maybe like this Pure Flow that is a PAPR system that just fits right on your head. Yes, That's convenient. Right. We could have been running this all day, Bob. I agree. But definitely in a lab or in a shop or something like this setting for sure. You definitely need some proper ventilation. Just, yeah, that's got a face full of air. That's that nice. Super nice. Outstanding. As always, guys, thanks for watching.